It's good to see everyone this morning. I'm glad we're all here. What a beautiful day. Oh my goodness. There was a, there had been a wedding across from the Huntsville Church yesterday. I thought, boy, you couldn't order a day like yesterday for a wedding. So it was a, it was a nice one. And I understand the girls have something to tell me about a wedding. So I'm just going to wait a minute on that, okay? You can tell me when you come up. Okay. Now that, Rob, they're looking at me like they haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, I'm glad we're all here this morning. Just want to let you know that the church is looking into purchasing an AED unit, um, an electric defibrillator. Automatic. Automatic electric defibrillator. I should have just let Rob say it because he does a much better job than I do. But if you're interested in donating for that, please um, use the mission container for um, any contributions that you would like to have for that. Um, it, they're a little bit more expensive than I anticipated. Probably be about $2,000. So um, just, just so you know, we're looking to do that, but if you'd like to help out that you're welcome to do that. I don't have any other announcements. Sarah, do you have any? No, I'm good. Okay, good. Good. I believe there's a birthday coming up this week. <gasps> Whose birthday is it, do you think? The guy we're just talking to? Frank. No, it's not Frank's. Frank's is in January. Yeah, that guy here has talking. Okay. Do we need to sing happy birthday? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Mary. Happy birthday to you. Thank you for the reminder, Frank. Thank you. You know, I have a good memory, they're short. As we center our hearts today, we're reminded, do not be afraid. God's love is reaching out to each one of us to touch our hurts and our wounds and to provide healing. Receive God's blessing and be assured of God's eternal love for you. Would you stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship? Gather us in, Lord, and hear our prayers. We come to this place in need of healing. Gather us in, Lord, and heal our spirits. We come here seeking guidance and strength. Gather us in, Lord, and open our hearts to receive your word. Open our hearts, our spirits, our souls to comprehend your word and follow you faithfully. Amen. Would you join me in singing hymn number 577? God of grace and God of glory.
opening prayer. Lord of justice and mercy, we come to you this day seeking your healing and reconciling love. Help us to be open to your word, your presence, your compassion. Clear our hearts of those things which block your will. Keep us focused on your enabling power so that we, having been healed, may more fully serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody took a picture of you? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so the girls have a wedding. So, Alicia and Noah and Lucas, anything exciting in your house today, this week?
there's seven? Actually, Tracy, I'm sorry, I was counting the kids, not you. <laughs> <That's all right>. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thankful that all seven of your, you are here today. Because I'm always glad to see you. I'm always glad to get hugs. But it's always good because you, the seven of you, remind me how good God is. God blesses us every single day and I am blessed to see the seven of you and I just pray that you're blessed during this day by something special God does for you. Let's pray. Almighty God, I, I thank you for these children. I thank you for their parents and their grandparents that bring them to church and Lord, I just pray that, that you will bless them. Bless them in a special way during this day. In your name we pray. Amen. centering him. just bring us a little breath of fresh air. I'm reading today from Luke 10, verses 25 through 37. <clears throat> Hear now the word of the Lord. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? He responded, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being and all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you've answered correctly, do this and you will live. But the legal expert wanted to prove that he was right. So he said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He encountered thieves who stripped him naked, beat him up, and left him near death. Now it just so happened that a priest was also going down the same road. When he saw the injured man, he crossed over to the other side of the road, and he went on his way. Likewise, a Levite came by that spot, saw the injured man, and crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. A Samaritan, who was on a journey, came to where the man was, but when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan went to him and bandaged his wounds, tending them with oil and wine. Then he placed the wounded man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he said, take care of him, and when I return, I will pay you back for any additional costs. What do you think? Which one of these three was a neighbor to the man who encountered thieves? Then the legal expert said, the one who demonstrated mercy toward him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Thanks be to God for his holy word. We've heard this story a time or two, haven't we? Probably every year we hear the, the story of the Good Samaritan. 
Once again, we're reminded that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He knows why he's going there. He knows he's going to suffer and die. But he also knows that he is going to fulfill God's purpose for creation. But on his way, a lawyer, a Jewish biblical, biblical scholar, we're, we're told, wants to put Jesus to a test. Luke says it's interesting that in some, um, some of the Bible variations, the word test is actually used and it's only used one other time in Luke. And that was when Jesus rebuked Satan and says, you shall not test the Lord your God. This, thought, this scholar is misguided. And he speaks the words of Satan. He says to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus quizzes him about the central teachings of their Jewish faith. <clears throat> and his opponent answers rightly about loving God and loving neighbor. But then he asks Jesus, who is my neighbor? Hmm. The man is trying to test Jesus. He's trying to get him into a trap. He wants Jesus to draw a line. He wants to say, he wants Jesus to say, well, the people on this side of the line are your neighbor, but the people on this side of the line are not your neighbor. But rather than give him a straight answer, Jesus erases the lines and he tears down any boundaries when he gives his answer in the form of a story. We, like I said, we've heard it before, the Good Samaritan. A man, apparently a Jew, has been to Jerusalem and he's now going home to Jericho. He has two choices. He can take a route that is longer, but much easier and safer, or he can take a route which is shorter, but much more dangerous. On top of that, the man is traveling by himself. So we're really not surprised that the fate that he meets on, on this road is not a good one. He's ambushed, robbed, beaten, stripped of his clothing, and left to die in a ditch. So along comes a priest, and we would imagine that the priest would help him. Oh, the priest looks at him, but he doesn't really see him. And he passes by on the other side of the road. And then a Levite came by. <coughs> Excuse me, another religious professional. He also took a quick look and keeps on going also on the other side of the road. Now, in the world of that day, wouldn't you have expected one of those people to come to the help of the person that laid in the ditch? In the ditch? But instead, <clears throat> a traveler comes along. He's a Samaritan, and Jesus' listeners' ears just perk up. They think, oh, there's nothing worse that could happen for that half-dead man than for a Samaritan to come by. Everybody that's listening to the story, we know how the story ends. But Jews and Samaritans were bitter enemies. Luke reminded us of this reality. It would be about 
as realistic for a soldier to tend the wounds of his enemy than it would be for a Samaritan to help this man in a ditch. A good Samaritan? Nobody thought that was possible, but only in the eyes of Jesus is it possible. So as I, know, as I said, we know the story. The Samaritan comes to the rescue, tends to the wounded man, loads him onto his donkey, and takes him to Jericho. There he pays for the man's lodging and instructs the innkeeper to give him food and medical care until he's well. And he tells him, when I come back to town, if there's any more expenses, I will take care of them. If a Samaritan can be compassionate to a Jew, what kind of world is Jesus creating? If a Samaritan can be more loving than the religious professionals, what kind of a world is this? And what would a world be like with no boundaries and with nobody ruled out as a neighbor? That's the kind of world that Jesus is creating in his stories and with his life. You know, I feel like we still haven't gotten, we haven't gotten this story. When I see things on the news, where there are videos of somebody being hurt by someone else. There were a couple this week. So somebody's standing there taking a video, but not helping the person in, um, in trouble. Not even calling 911. What would this story look like if we were the victims in the ditch. We can see ourselves as the victim, or we can dismiss the story, dismiss Jesus, and insist that no such world is possible. Can we imagine ourselves as the one in the ditch? But it's a ditch of our own making. Can we imagine that in our carelessness, with our foolish choices, in our sinfulness, We've gotten ourselves into a difficult place. We're as good as dead. Can we suppose that we've wandered from God, perhaps by trying to tell God who is neighbor and who's not, maybe negotiating with God a little bit, perhaps by ignoring God in our desire to live life on our own terms? Can we suppose that we have wandered far from God and are in danger of losing our lives to the power of sin that has attacked us and left us gasping, gasping for life in the ditch? And then comes along help. No, along comes the one we have made an enemy. Along comes the God whom we've ignored and defended. Along comes the Lord of all whom we can expect will finish this job and send us off to hell for all eternity. And what does God do? God does the unexpected. Rather than killing us or leaving us for dead, God tends to our wounds, gives everything imaginable to bring us back to life. In fact, this God embodied in Jesus Christ crawls right in the ditch with us and will be beaten and stripped and left for dead. Does that sound far-fetched? Not if the one who stops and helps and crawls in the ditch is Jesus. You see, Jesus has already made it clear what he's all about. He's on his way to Jerusalem where he will give his all, his life, to forgive and heal and to give us life. Now we notice, this is another of those stories, Jesus really doesn't tell us how it ends. We don't know what becomes of the victim. Once he is left in the hands of the innkeeper, we can only hope that the outcome is a good one. But do you think that maybe we're intended to finish this story with our lives? When we receive life from Jesus, what will we do with it? 
Well, we keep it to ourselves, and maybe a few people that we feel comfortable sharing it, or will we, like Jesus, ignore the boundaries, see everyone as our neighbor, and reach out in mercy to the one who's in the same ditch that we've been in ourselves? The story teaches us this, that this is when we'll know the loving, forgiving, compassionate Jesus. For that's how Jesus received his inheritance, eternal life, by giving all, even his life, for those of us who are in the ditch. And Jesus is the one that says to each one of us, follow me and go do likewise. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, as we've heard this story today that is so familiar to us, remind us that there are no boundary lines between our neighbors and us. Lord, may we be like the Samaritan and help those in need. Amen. Would you join me now in our affirmation of faith? The Apostles' Creed is found on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we go to God in prayer this morning, do we have prayer, prayer concerns that we would like to bring forward? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we, we come to you this morning. We're humbly in need of prayer. We thank you for always being right by our side. We're thankful that we can come to you at any time, in any place. And Lord, we, we just are in awe of what you can do in our lives when we let you, when we open the door wide and let you in. Almighty God, we, there are so many people that need your healing today. We pray for those that are dealing with cancer. Lord, we pray for Kay, who's been going through a difficult time in her treatment. We pray for Marty, who either has or will be having heart surgery. Lord, we pray for Lola's mom, Ida, as she's having a difficult time with getting around. Lord, you know what these people need. We know you know what all of us need. We pray for Colleen, who's not feeling well today. And Lord, I pray that that she'll get some relief from her breathing issues. But Lord, I thank you for the folks that are here today. I thank you for the folks that are here. I thank you for the, the children that are here. And Lord, I pray for those that aren't, aren't in church this morning, whatever the reason. And, and Lord, I, I am afraid that, that there are some that just haven't returned to us yet. And, and Lord, I pray for those people. And Lord, I, I pray for 
Pray for Chester, who's in North Carolina with his, his daughter. Pray that he's doing well. Lord, you know what's going on in our minds. Sometimes our train of thought just leaves the track. But Lord, I'm thankful that you do know what's going on in our lives. We pray for those that are dealing with illness, whatever that illness might be. And Lord, we pray for those that are dealing with psychological issues. <coughs> whatever it is, Lord, we, help, we pray that they will be able to get the help that they need. Lord, we praise you. We praise you for this beautiful world, this wonderful place to worship, and the congregation that gathers here. May we be like the Samaritans and look past the lines that have been drawn. And may we be good neighbors to those around us. Lord, I, I, pray, for, I pray for our country and I pray for our world. Lord, you know I pray for a, a cure for cancer and we've seen steps in the right direction for that and we pray that those continue. And Lord, I pray in addition to peace for your earth. The beautiful planet that you have created that, that one country or decide, has decided to destroy another and, and Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine as they, they just deal with being out of their homes and into new areas. And, and Lord, I, I just pray for those people of the Ukraine that you will bless them. And Lord, I pray that you will hear our prayers, whatever they are, whomever they're for, we pray that you will hear our prayers and help us to be faithful prayer warriors. Lord, bless us as we join in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we sometimes exclude, hold grudges, and nurse contempt all the while hiding ourselves for fear that we too would be found wanting. We forget that all you touch is holy and that you created all that is. So when we exclude, we exclude you. When we hold grudges, we are not loving your creation. When we show contempt, we are contemptuous of those you love. May we be made holy in truth loving as you love, clean and unclean alike. Forgive us, we pray, in the name of Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God has blessed us in so many ways, let us now share our gifts.
God, your love bears the fruit of hope and grace. Your ways lead to fullness of life. May today's offering bear fruit in our world, that your love may cause old hatreds to cease, old wounds to heal, and old divisions to mend. Amen. Would you join me now in hymn number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. with God. 